The Public Affairs Director for the American Society for Biochemistry and Molecular Biology, Benjamin Korb, is joining me now. Thank you for being here. We have a really important topic to talk about, and that is the funding for research. And I know it's something that you all have been really passionate about. And it's been a continued problem, and perhaps maybe coming to a head even more with the current political administration. Yeah, we're, um, we're seeing a, an environment that we haven't seen before. Um, while research funding, funding for biomedical research, has been growing for the past couple of years, um, what we're seeing for the first time in my time as an advocate, proposals for significant cuts to the research um, coming from the White House, which is a space that we're not used to, we're not, uh, you know, uh, biomedical research has become a very bipartisan issue and has been really uh, the benefactor of bipartisan support and increases over the past couple of years. Um, our researchers are doing really wonderful things. We're understanding diseases better. We're developing more cures and treatments. Um, now doesn't feel like the time for us to be cutting back on funding, but really to be doubling down on funding so that we can help Americans who are sick across the country. For people who are hearing this, especially members, what can they do, what should they be doing so that research is not coming to a screeching halt because of lack of funding? Right, so I think the first thing they should do is they should go to their member society and find out what their member society is doing um, in the space of public affairs and public policy and advocacy. Um, there are lots of good organizations here that are doing lots of really good, strong work in this space. And it's an easy way as a scientist to get involved at the ground level um, with experienced people who can teach you every step of the way. What we're finding is, is that there's such a passion and energy now. Um, we saw it with the march that happened just yesterday or two days ago. Um, it's really important for people to stand up and be heard more often and to be involved in the process and to get out of the lab and to talk about their science. Um, and the societies that are here can really help people to learn how to do that and give you a platform to make that opportunity. But it's not just one day, say, you know, one march or one meeting. It has to go on all year long. Yeah, that's right. Uh, you know, I, um, it is not a moment, it's a movement. Um, and, you know, marching is wonderful and I'm glad people have been doing it. Um, signing up to be an advocate with your society is wonderful to sign up and do that. Um, but we really need to kind of get some skin in the game and get deeply involved in this. Um, there are a lot of new energy and new advocates in this space resulting from election results, resulting from cuts that we've heard about. Um, a lot of us have been doing this, have been working in this space for years. Um, we're glad to have uh, so many new people kind of under the tent and in the fold of what we're doing. Um, but I want everyone to recognize it's not a one day thing. It's a commitment, not a major commitment, but you know, once a month participate. You know, uh, three times a year is better than no times a year. And so um, I'd really like to see people continue that involvement. And you talk about being involved in this for so very long. So you know not only the big picture, but the little things, the important projects that may be halted that really makes the difference between life and death in some cases. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I'm, I'm fond of a stat that I've seen. Uh, you know, one in three Americans live with a disease that has no cure right now. Um, and so that, you know, I'll tell people in a conference room, look to your left, look to your right. One of you three don't have have a disease that there's, we haven't found the treatment for. Um, it's time for that to stop. And we really need, the only way we're gonna get there is by the robust funding that's needed and by getting more scientists and more science advocates and more friends of scientists to stand up and say, we really support this, we need to move forward with this, um, and just getting involved. How do you help scientists understand that it's not just their research that is important? I'm sure a lot feel, hey, I'm doing my part right here, someone else will worry about the funding. Yeah, that's the tough part. Um, science funding, as much as we love it, is not an entitlement. Um, you know, everybody has to fight for every bit of money that's invested in every bit of space. Um, and so I'll tell the members of my society often, um, if you're not out there fighting for money, somebody else is out there fighting, and it is kind of the, the squeaky wheel is gonna get the grease. Um, you know, I think we like to think of science to being above the political fray, and it is above the political fray, but funding is not. Funding is kind of right there in the middle of this process. Um, and, and if you're not willing to step out and step up and be involved, um, other people are, and they're going to go ahead and get the funding. So um, I encourage people to, again, get involved. Um, recognize you are a special interest, you're a very special interest, um, and that's okay, that's not a bad thing to be. Um, and, and so that's what I tell my folks. Even if they're not comfortable with it, it's critical. That's right, absolutely. Yeah. Thank you so much. No problem, thank you.